Hello my dear students, today we are starting the 6th semester classes and I will be teaching you developmental biology. What is developmental biology? Developmental biology or embryology deals with the development of an organism from the egg to an adult. All organisms start their development from a single cell which is called zygote and during development the zygote undergoes different cleavages or cell division and different tissues, organs and organ systems will be formed. The embryo will pass through different stages and finally the complete adult organism will be formed. And the study of the transformation of the single celled zygote to the adult organism is called developmental biology. What is embryo? As I told, all organisms start their development from a single cell called zygote and they pass through different stages of development and these different stages of development are passed either inside the egg or inside the maternal body. In the case of reptiles and birds, the development of the embryo takes place inside the egg and in the case of mammals, development takes place inside the womb of the mother that is inside the maternal body. And the juvenile form of an animal which is present inside the egg or inside the maternal body is called embryo. What is development? The gradual transformation of egg to a new adult individual is called development. When a single celled zygote starts cleavage, it gives rise to different tissues and organs and organ systems and finally the complete adult organism will be formed. And the egg is getting gradually transformed into the new adult individual. And this gradual transformation is called development. Aristotle is honored as the father of embryology because he is the first embryologist to describe the development and reproduction of many kinds of organisms. His important findings were published in the book The Generation Animalium. Aristotle believed that the complex adult organism develops from a simple formless beginning. All organisms start their development from a single cell called zygote and this zygote is not having any complex organization. And the zygote will undergo cleavage and the embryo will pass through different stages and finally the adult organism with a complex organization is formed. The findings of Aristotle laid the foundation for the basic principles of embryology. Hence, Aristotle is honored as the father of embryology. Now coming to the different theories in developmental biology. They are theory of preformation, theory of epigenesis, germplasm theory, mosaic theory, regulative theory and germ layer concept. First, let us see what is theory of preformation. Theory of preformation was proposed by Marcelo Malpighi and according to this theory, the gametes contain in them a miniature preformed embryo. And this miniature preformed embryo that is present in the gametes, it is called homunculus. During development, the homunculus that is present inside the gamete will unfold and increase in size to form the body of the new adult organism. There are two schools of thoughts in theory of preformation. Some scientists argued that the preformed embryo homunculus is present inside the ovum and they are called ovists. And the other group of scientists, they argued that the preformed embryo is present inside the sperm and they were called spermists or animalculists. Among these two arguments, the argument of ovis was most accepted because they argued that in the case of parthenogenesis, the egg undergoes development without the assistance of sperm and hence the 
homunculus must be present inside the egg and not inside the sperm. This is theory of preformation. Now coming to the theory of epigenesis. Theory of epigenesis was proposed by C.F. Wolf based on his experiments in the development of chick embryo and his results were published in the book Theoria Generations. According to theory of epigenesis, there is no preformed embryo in the gametes and the gametes contain substances which are capable of forming the organized body and the development of the new organism takes place only after fertilization. In the gamete or in the egg, there is no preformed embryo. During development, the substances which are present in the egg, they will arrange themselves to form the different body parts of the embryo. That is theory of epigenesis. Now coming to the germplasm theory. Germplasm theory was proposed by August Wiesmann in the year 1904. According to germplasm theory, the female gamete egg and the male gamete sperm, they contain the carriers of hereditary potentials called determinants. These determinants are present in the chromosomes. The egg and the sperm, they contribute chromosomes equally to the zygote which is the fertilized egg. And the zygote will undergo development and form two types of cells, the germ cells and the somatic cells. The zygote which contains all the determinants will undergo cleavage and during cleavage the determinants will get segregated and distributed to different cells. So there will be different types of somatic cells receiving different types of determinants. Each type of cell will be receiving only a particular determinant. And the fate of the somatic cell will depend on the type of determinant that it has received. The somatic cells which have received the determinants to develop into the cardiac muscle will give rise to the heart. The somatic cells which have received the determinant to develop into the neuron will give rise to the brain. So like that there are different somatic cells and these somatic cells will receive a particular type of determinant. Only the germ cells will receive all the determinants because germ cells are the cells which are giving rise to the next generation. And that is called germplasm. So only the germ cells will receive the complete set of determinants. That is germplasm theory. Now coming to the next theory that is mosaic theory. Mosaic theory was proposed by Wilhelm Rose. He has done an experiment in the fertilized egg of frog. After the first cleavage when the embryo was in the two cell stage he pricked one of the cells with a red hot needle and the cell was damaged and the other cell which was not affected was allowed to continue its development. But the cell which was pricked with the red hot needle got destroyed and the other cell which was not affected gave rise to a half embryo. So here a defective embryo was formed because the cell which was pricked with the red hot needle got destroyed and the other cell gave rise to a half embryo. So according to mosaic theory, every part of the egg is predetermined to develop into a particular organ. The fate of every part of the egg cytoplasm is predetermined. And if a cell or if a blastomere is separated from the embryo, then a defective embryo will be formed. Since the fate of each blastomere is determined, it is called determinate theory. Now coming to the next theory that is regulative theory. 
regulative theory was proposed by Hans Driesch in his experiment on the egg of sea urchin. Instead of pricking the egg with a red hot needle, he separated the four blastomeres and allowed the four blastomeres to continue their development. All the four blastomeres, they developed into complete normal embryos. So, according to regulative theory, the fate of the different parts of the egg is not predetermined. Every part of the egg has the potential to develop into any organ. During development, if a part of the egg is removed or if a cell is separated from the embryo, then the remaining cells will reorganize development in such a way that a complete normal embryo is formed. Since the fate of the different parts of the egg is not predetermined, it is called indeterminate theory. Now let us have a comparison of mosaic development and regulative development. According to mosaic development, the fate of every blastomere is predetermined and if the blastomeres are separated, they will give rise to defective embryo. Here you can see the defective embryos which are formed from the separated blastomeres. Only the embryo which is having all the blastomeres can give rise to a complete normal larva. In the case of regulative development, the fate of the blastomeres is not predetermined and if the blastomeres are separated, they can give rise to a complete normal embryo because the development can be reorganized. Now coming to the last theory that is germ layer concept. The germ layer concept is based on the contributions of two scientists, Pander and Von Bayer. Pander traced the development of the chick and he found that there are three germ layers which are formed in the chick embryo. They are ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. During development, the embryo is passing through different stages like blastula and gastrula and the different organs and organ systems are developing from the three germ layers that is ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. This is the fundamental embryologic sequence in all the animals. That is germ layer concept. So that is about the theories in developmental biology. Thank you.